This diagram shows a hypothetical transboundary aquifer connected to a gaining river. Both the aquifer and the river are shared by both states A and B. This video will illustrate how groundwater flow changes when state A pumps from a well near the boundary. Next, we will view a cross section through the well. The cross section, outlined in pink, is revealed by removing the front part of the landscape. Now the view has been rotated so that we can look directly at the cross section. Here are groundwater flow paths shown by black lines with arrows for conditions of recharge to the aquifer from rainfall at land surface and no pumping from the well. The system is in a steady state, meaning that groundwater flow does not change with time. The flow directions are generally from the left and from the right toward the river. Each state's groundwater discharges to its side of the river and there is no flow across the boundary. Here are conditions four minutes after the well starts pumping. On the cross section, the white lines with arrows are flow paths to the well, and the purple line is the boundary between where the groundwater flows to the well and where it flows to the river. On the graph, the solid blue line shows the amount of groundwater flow to the river at four minutes of pumping, which is equal to the flow with no pumping shown by the dashed line. At this early time, the well captures groundwater storage in the aquifer rather than groundwater that discharged to the river prior to pumping. As the video proceeds, the pumping will continue and you will see how flow paths, the purple boundary, and the flow to the river change with time. In other aquifers, the timing and size of these changes could vary greatly. The changes could be occur much faster or much slower than shown here depending on factors such as the pumping rate, the aquifer properties, and the change in flow to the river could be much different. In seven minutes, the well intercepts some of the flow from the left. The groundwater from the far left flows deeply, goes to the river instead of the well. At 1.4 hours along this cross section, all groundwater to the left of the well flows towards the well. Most of the pump water is still derived from groundwater storage, but the well is beginning to capture groundwater that flowed to the river before pumping began, as shown by the slight downward shift of the solid blue line. At 8 hours, flow paths in state B begin to be affected by the pumping. At about five days, groundwater flows from state B begin to cross the boundary to state A, but still discharge the shared river. At eight days, the groundwater flow to the river begins to decrease more rapidly. At about 20 days, deep groundwater state B begins to flow to the well in state A, while shallower groundwater continues to flow toward the river. Thus, the well has not only captured uh, some of state A's groundwater that would migrate to the shared river if there were no pumping, but has also captured some of the groundwater from state B. Flow to the river continues to decrease because the well is capturing more groundwater that flowed to the river prior to pumping. At three months, groundwater flow from state B to state A's well continues to increase. At one year, the pumping begins to capture the shared river water as shown by the flow path from the river into the aquifer. Now, after about two years, the system has nearly reached steady state under pumping conditions, meaning that flow paths, and flow to the river are no longer changing very much with time. Recall that in other aquifers, the timing of the changes in flow, the time to reach steady state, 
and the decrease in flow to the river could vary greatly from what has been shown here. Next, we will examine the pumping-induced changes in flow from another view. The diagram here is a view of the landscape from earlier in this video, showing the cross-section through the well. Imagine that we remove all the soil and aquifer material from the land surface down to the pink line, which is at the depth of the well. What remains is a horizontal surface through the aquifer at this depth. As shown here, this is a cutaway view so that we can see groundwater flow deep in the aquifer. The river has been removed, but its position has been projected down to the surface at the well depth. The front surface of the diagram is the deep part of the cross section through the well. Now we zoom in and view steady state flow paths with no pumping. On the horizontal surface inside the aquifer, groundwater flow is from the left and the right towards the center. The surface only shows the horizontal component of flow. In three dimensions, these flow paths are actually downward near the left and right boundaries, then upward underneath the river, as shown along the cross section. We will again view changes with time due to pumping. This view emphasizes the three-dimensional nature of the flow, showing flow paths in the purple boundary on the horizontal surface within the aquifer, as well as along the cross section. As pumping continues, you will see groundwater in larger and larger volumes, enclosed by the purple boundary, flow towards the well. Note again that in other aquifers, the changes with time could occur much faster or much slower than shown here. At about 20 days, deep groundwater in state B begins to migrate towards the well. The aquifer volume in which groundwater flows to the well continues to expand with groundwater further and further away from the cross-section moving towards the well. At about two years on the horizontal surface at the well depth, all flow from state B is still to the river rather than to the well. Deeper groundwater from state B migrates towards the well. This view shows the horizontal components of flow paths on the surface near the bottom of the aquifer after about two years of pumping. Groundwater over a large area, both state B, flows to the well rather than to the river. Flow at this depth is not as strongly influenced by the river compared to flow at shallower depths.